let's see, let's see. Okay, perfect. So last session, um, the adventurers, um, after pulling themselves from the rubble of the fallen Tower of Fog, uh, with um, the sort of sole survivor um, of the acolytes of the Binding, um, traveled down the mountain to um, the fallen cap of the tower. They found some relics there from the um, the Order of the Binding. Uh, which is the group of s wizards or sorcerers or mages of some sort that um, resided up in that tower. After acquiring those articles, um, they continued on further. They heard the scream of a girl in the woods, and when they went to intercept and see what was going on, they found some goblins with red hats that were f trying to um, accost the girl. Um, Fortunately, they came in just in time, killed several of the number, and the goblins that saw this display of might very quickly um, ran away. Um, unlike most goblins, traditionally, who will stay and fight um, stupidly in hopes of uh, succeeding, these ones seemed very, very quickly um, sent to rout and uh, retreated. The group didn't follow for long and went back to rescue or continue with the girl, led her to the town, uh, also named Fog. Um, and there they have split with the acolyte girl, Rodden, um, who has stated that she's going to stay with the um, wizard in the town. They have been advised that if they want assistance in defending the town or any idea as to where the goblins might be lairing, they should go and speak to the elf um, of the wood, an elf named Elrith Legabrethian. All right. And it was said that he resides near the hot springs that the girl happened to be visiting when she was accosted. So they're not too far from the town, just south down the road. All right. Any questions? I'm good. I'm good. Anybody? Nothing? Okay. Anything in particular you want to do in the town before we move to the, um, the Hot Springs area? I believe before we left last session, we had... Uh, Concluded that time was of the essence, so we were going to be heading out immediately. Perfect. So you guys make your way back that uh, way. You find the place where the dead goblins were. Um, they still happen to be there. A couple of wolves have started tearing at one of their carcasses, but as you approach um, in a very feral fashion, they kind of growl. And then as they see that you're not really too put off by it, kind of stir away and retreat. Um, basically just getting the food where they can. And uh, you continue on to the hot springs, which is kind of in a glade, um, an open um, area in the forest. And you can see on the back end of the springs, um, it's, a it's a series of pools of hot water that's misting up. Um, and uh, behind them, there's a uh, series of stones um, forming kind of a rocky hill um, and set atop that is a strange-looking wooden house. Um, Bellerin would recognize the architecture style um, as that of the elves of the Highwood. Um, it would seem that uh, the style is pretty much the same for most enclaves. The house looks very sturdy, like it could hold um, itself against the elements, but you know for a fact, Bellerin, that if someone wanted to quickly take apart the house and move it by wagon or move it by, um, you know, other means, they certainly could. So it's kind of like a yurt. Exactly. It's kind of like a yurt. Well, then, um, as we approach the house, I will uh, actually call out in Alvin, hello, the house just to see if there's anyone there. Sure. Um, as you do so, uh, Gimmits, go ahead and make me a perception check. Okay. Uh, 
So you would actually feel a very strange sensation on the path that you're walking through. The path kind of walks up towards the uh, the rocky hill with waterways, like like water pools on either side. Um, it would it kind of feels like the rock that you're standing on isn't set inside of the water or like bare or barring both pools. Like both pools seem to be connected, and the stone that you're standing on is floating on the water. And with that perception check, you also see a form or figure or something in the water kind of move. Um, and as you kind of look at it, it kind of takes on a feminine form kind of moving through the water. Uh -huh. does, it, does it look like any or resemble anything that I might know? Human, uh, possibly. It's, it's definitely not a dwarf. Um, it, it definitely has kind of a, like a, maybe a five foot or so height to it and its body is kind of lithe and quickly darts into the depths of the water. You're not sure how deep these pools go. Um, I'd like to relate to Bellerin and Hadrian and be like, there's uh, something lurking in these waters. Okay. So, um, Bellerin, Hadrian, anything in particular? Oh, you want to... Sorry, I hit the wrong button for my push to talk. Oh, <laughs> I look back at him. Oh, what'd you see? It looks like a... it looks it looked like a woman diving in the water. Uh, could I make a uh, check to try and see if I know what or what that could be? Sure. Uh, go ahead and um, make a nature check. Um, or an arcana check. Um, either way, um, DCs will be different based on what you roll. Would I be able to check as well? Based on the description, you can give it a try, but it's again, it's going to be a bit harder for you as well. Because I think I know what you're going to roll, arcana, right? Yep. Yeah. Bellerin, um, very quickly, um, the sound of it, um, it, it sounds like what's known as uh, a nereid. Um, because the creature hasn't come up for air and you haven't seen it. And if it's a female form, um, it could be one of like maybe three things that you can think of. And the most likely culprit would be a Nereid. Nereids are spirits of water, kind of like dryads. But instead of tying themselves to a tree, they tie themselves to like uh, natural water formations, glades, um, or like ponds, pools, um, or in this case, hot springs. So I will relay back to them. Uh, going by what you said, probably a water nymph. So a spirit of the lakes, then. Kind of, yeah. How corporal are they? Asking for a friend. <laughs> are you asking him? Yeah, I'm asking about a spell of If I remember correctly, it kind of depends on how corporal they want to be. Hmm. That's right. I just take out my little something that I can write down on, write down where we are. For a friend, obviously. Sure. Um, you would see the path that kind of leads up the uh, rocky hill. Um, it kind of makes like a single switch back and then leads up to the front of the um, hut, the house. I would probably start continuing up the path. Okay. Once you make it up to the front of the house, you would see that the door has been left ajar. Um, and it does look like there is still a fire kind of simmering um, in the uh, fire space of the uh, the hut, which kind of looks like it's taken on a mantle-like shape made out of the rock of the um, the hill itself. Um, but it looks like someone actually used some sort of spell or magic, or possibly some sort of amazing skill for the dwarf um, um, to shape the stone like a fireplace um, with flu and everything that exits out the back of the house. Um, the fire has con down to a simmer though it's not exactly um, a roaring fire at all there is a table um, in the center of the room 
um, and set out on the table um, is a grouping of papers. One paper stretched out over top of the majority of those papers appears to be some sort of map. Can I go investigate the map? Certainly. So the map is very rudimentary. It shows kind of like a bowl-like shape. And based on your high vantage perception of um, looking down at and kind of moving around in the valley, it appears to be a hand-drawn map of the valley itself. There are a couple of points that are marked on the map. And in Elvish, um, you see that um, it says home on one of those markings. It says fog on another of those markings. And it says tower on another of those markings, which you quickly identify. And on looking at the map, realize that this is pretty accurate um, based on your travels. But you see a third, or I'm sorry, a fourth location that says red cap. And it appears to be north of this house. But north kind of eastern compared to northwestern where the town is located. Um, does it look like there was any struggle in the house or if someone just left in a hurry or anything like that? Uh, based on everything that you can see, whoever left this place left of their own will. There's no, there doesn't appear to be any kind of fight or scuffle. Hmm. Uh, Bellerin, Adrian, do you think we should borrow this map? Maybe not borrow, maybe create a copy. Of some kind. Someone has paper. I have paper. I think that would be wiser. If we're going to be asking for somebody's help, we probably don't want to steal from them. All considering. Um, how long would it take for me to probably try to draw a rough copy of this map? I mean, looking at it, you pretty much can memorize it pretty quick. I mean, you if you want to make a copy of it, do you have um? quill ink charcoal anything like that uh, yeah okay if you have your own that's fine go ahead and set to it if you want to borrow the influence here that's fine as well there there do appear to be uh tools for cartography um maybe half an hour okay Would it speed up the time if i was to put the sword above it using light so it's almost like making yeah. a paper bit see-through to trace it Oh, if you want to trace it, yeah, no, that's brilliant. In fact, gain inspiration for that. That's that's really smart. Um, yeah, if you want to trace it, um, Hadrian, you're basically assisting um, Bellerin. You're drawing um, using the you know the technique that was just outlined. You're able to do it in five minutes. I think it was Gimmits who was drawing, not Bellerin. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My brain did a fart. <laughs> that's okay. So we have one copied map then. And looking at it, too, once you have it finalized and this one being a bit more rudimentary compared to the one that you were drawing from, um, you can see that it, the house that you're in, the red caps um, location per the map and the town seem to kind of form a triangle. They're almost equidistant from one another. A isosceles triangle, I think is what I'm looking for, is the word. Yeah. Well, if they're equidistant, it'd be an equilateral. That's the <laughs> Sorry, Zelda nerd. As soon as we've done that, I just want to have a quick glance around the room for anything that looks like it's a book of magic or anything. So it looks like there is a, um, a shelf. Um, it looks like the shelf is actually kind of made up um, of stone as well, similar to the mantle place. And there's about 17 books on the shelf. Um, if you want to take a quick skim, all of them look like history books or tomes of lore. None of them look like spell books. Uh, I want to take a quick skim then. Okay. When we've traced the map, have we translated like the Elvish to common, or is it still in Elvish? If Gimmits was drawing the map, um, does he speak Elvish? I do not believe so. And Ravis, would you basically point out what those words mean and tell them? Yeah, with relative ease. Then yeah, Gimmits would probably write it in common or dwarvish. No, I'd do it as well. I'd help just okay. point out some words that I know, but 
Okay. And then once Gimmins is kind of like, you know, setting the map to his pocket and, you know, Bellerin's kind of taking a gaze around the place. Was there anything in particular you wanted to do, Ravis, before we move to Adrian? Uh, yes, actually. Because you said that there was implements for cartography and the like here. Yes. I myself am going to take down a piece of paper and effectively quickly roll, or scrawl out a message for um, El Elrith that we were or we had stopped by hoping that he'd be willing to help the town. Okay. And, um, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I just it's haven't okay. yet. Okay. Um, so you write down the note, um, and uh, then Hadrian walks over to the bookshelf. You start looking at the titles, and as you're kind of just getting a gaze for it, not even before you finish uh, reading the first title, you hear a loud <laughs> from above you, and you look up and you see a black cat looking down at you with solid green eyes. Well. Hello. As you're kind of peering at it and kind of like, you know, looking at it in its defensive posture, you notice something very strange about it in that it's uh, got wings on its back. Unusual. Indeed. I'm just going to look at it and knowing the knowledge of the tower had familiars, I'm going to speak to it in Elvish. Hello. Is your master about? It kind of lets Anyone out near? like a low growl. Um, and then it kind of like moves towards the back of the shelf so that you can only see its swishing tail kind of coming off the back end of it. I think you will have known we've been here even without the note now, Bellerin. Yeah, matters are matters. True. All right. Um, the cat seems to kind of every time you kind of move towards the book to tie, take a gaze at them, try and distract you from looking at the books. But you're able to catch the titles of some of these. There's a white book, uh, white leather, um, or possibly uh, some aquatic animals um, skin binding the book. The title is written in kind of a blackish sepia uh, on the uh, spine of the book, and it says the Arch of Time. Um, the book next to it um, says the um, the curse of Tovesh Nernon. Uh, there's another book titled um, the Way of the Legend. There's another book titled um, the uh, the Mysteries of the Guild of Malbranch. Uh, there's a, another book um, titled in Elvish. Do you speak it? Yeah. Okay. Um, it would say uh, the uh, Adventures of Dryson Kila. K H I L A, um, and then a couple of other random titles. The art of time one looks amusing to have a gander through. I will have to discuss it with the elf after we've spoken to him. You don't steal from potential allies. <laughs> Very good. Um, okay, and then onward. What do you guys plan to do? Shall we head to where it says Rip Cats on the map? Maybe he's already left to engage them. Yeah, that seems like a wise choice. At the very least, we could potentially fight them and make it clear that the village is still protected. Even if it might be a fight, it would be quite difficult on our end. It might be worthwhile to attempt some diplomacy first, seeing as jumping into a fight is part of what got us here. Very true. Yes, but it could also get us out of here. But I do say we take a sh different route. I say we, because of the way that the villages are outlined, I say we cut halfway across so we're in between the village and the red caps. So for the red caps to get to the village quickly, they've got to go near us. That sounds wise. Uh, on our way out, we could also try and get a hold of the, or try and get the attention of the maiden of the springs, see if she has any information for us as well. I think that would be wise. Okay. So you guys go down back to the springs. Uh, uh, go ahead. 
So I was going to say, the path that we have to take leaving the house would take us through them regardless, correct? Yes, correct. Uh, yeah, you have to go down. You, I mean, I guess you can go down the other side um, of the hill. This just has a path that goes down that's a little bit safer. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was visualizing it right in my head. So to the springs. Uh, once there, um, what's your plan? I'd like to mage hand and just run my mage hand along the water to try and gain her attention, not massively disrupting the water, just enough, almost knocking on the water I to hit the front door. Doesn't seem to cause any stirs other than the typical uh, ripples of water that course away from the hand. Um, I forget, guys. Did we take a short rest at the very least when we were in the uh, town before we left? Short rest, not long rest. Yeah, we took a short rest, if I remember right. That's correct. All right. I'd run. Divine sense requires a long rest. Crap. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, anything else that you guys want to attempt to do to try and rouse the spirit of the water? Um, oh, are, sorry. Are there any, uh, like water plants? Um, are there are rocks I could toss in. The answer to both of those questions is yes. There are small shrubs nearby that are just typical, like, forest fauna. Um, or flora, because fauna is animals. Um, and then <laughs> rocks and pebbles are uh, in abundance around the area. Uh, I'd like to drop a small rock into the pond and watch it sink. Okay. Yeah, nothing really happens. Can I use a precipitation to just make a small gust of wind and a couple sparks and at the same time say in Elvish, Maiden of the Spring, are you he are you able to speak with us? It looks really, really cool to everyone else, but it doesn't seem to elicit any kind of effect. I'm trying to remember a uh, line. It's specifically referring to Nimue, but I thought it would be useful here. One, or You said with those normal plants, are any of them, by dumb luck, lilies? Um, probably not, no. How hot does the spring look? Uh, it looks like a hot spring. Um, it looks comfortable. Like It definitely looks like something you can kind of set yourself in. Um, it would definitely make you sweat. Um, but it probably wouldn't kill you. I won't take off my gear, but I will drop about waist deep in the spring and make my way towards where my last saw her. Okay. Uh, um, as you her. attempt to put yourself down waist deep, you only get to about knee depth. It looked a lot deeper than it actually appears to be. Um, it's probably about like, maybe thigh depth. It's maybe about three feet, or not three feet, like two feet deep. Uh, like bathtub depth. Okay. Yeah, and I'll just make my way slowly towards. Okay. Yeah, you're standing out in a hot spring. Just cooling out as I walk. Mm -hmm. It's doing? definitely very warm, uh, but nothing seems to kind of bring itself to you or uh, attempt to kind of gain your attention. Um, do me a favor, though, and make a uh, perception check. Sorry, hold on a second. Okay, um, pretty solid. Uh, why is it rolling one? I'm, so, I'm annoyed. Uh, but you uh, make a perception check, and you see that um, your feet and legs are invisible to you. And what you initially thought was just kind of a, uh, a situation where you were like looking at uh, a very steamy segment of water. Instead, um, you realize that you're not seeming to see yourself beneath the water. 
you can see other things beneath the water, like there's stones, and it's actually pretty clear compared to what you thought it was based on the you know fog coming up, the, the, the mist coming up. But where your legs touch the water, underneath the water, they don't seem to exist. I turn and look at the group and just go. So I can't see my legs below the surface. Once he points it out, you guys notice it as well. It doesn't seem that anything of his person that is beneath the water is visible. But you can see other things at the bottom of the water. I do want to <laughs> lift my leg out slowly so you it's still, on one leg. You still have a leg, yeah. Um, it becomes visible as you pull it out. And then I'm going to do something that could potentially be quite stupid. I'm going to go even though it means potentially lying on like my stomach, go fully under the water. Okay. See if that gets any reaction. As he goes under the water, you guys see the portions of him that do go underneath disappear. You can still see the things that you've dropped in, the plant and whatnot, um, dropped into the water. Like They're still visible in the water, but he is not. The portions of him that are completely submerged are invisible to you. You said that there was a second uh, pool, correct? Uh, there's actually about seven of these pools. Uh, the one that he chose was the one that uh, Gimmis is kind of like, there's something in the water. Um, but yeah, there are seven total of these um, these springs. I'm going to look to see if I see his reflection in any of the other springs. Absolutely not. Nothing. Okay, then. Uh, with that, I'll actually lean over on the side of the uh, path and dunk my head in the water to look around. Same situation if uh, Gimmis is looking. When you see the elf's face go into the water and head go into the water, the portions that submerge disappear. Um, when you start looking around under the water, your eyes start to kind of hurt because of the temperature. It's not like burning or scalding or anything, but it is a bit, bit warm. Uh, you pull your head back up out of the water after seeing nothing underneath. Well, that's disconcerting. And I'll slowly rise out the water. I can avenge him. Um, I... Yeah. I'm sorry, you cut out there for a second. What was that? Um, could I take tankards and fill it with the water? Yeah. You have tankards full of water. Um, I'd like to put my finger in the water that is in one of the tankards. It dips into the water just normal. But doesn't turn invisible like it doesn't it turn invisible. In the As I walk back to the group, I'm just gonna say maybe protection method for the people that use the hot springs, the red caps we know attack near here, so maybe it's a way of if they hear them coming, they can hide beneath the surface. Very possible. And as soon as they like step out onto the bank, I'm just going to cast Prestitution on myself to dry myself yep. off. You hear a loud <laughs> sound um, as he blow dries his uh, clothes clean. <laughs> um, well, since we can't seem to get the uh, individual's attention, uh, I propose we head off, though uh, as he does that, he actually fishes out a couple of copper coins. Mm -hmm. which he'll lay by one of the hot springs. Okay. Right. You guys head off on, on your way uh, yeah. towards the red caps? Yes. Okay. I believe cutting across so that we're in that path between the village, though. In a cinematic fashion, something you guys don't see, but as you guys walk away from the, uh, the springs, um, set for your goal, you're heading towards the village, not the red caps? Well, we're heading to the red caps, but we're cutting across, so we're in between. If the okay. red caps want to attack the village, they've got to go past us, sort of okay. deal. Unless they're going around you. Got it. Um, but as you guys are walking away and entering into the forest, out of the glade, um, the camera watches as a female's hand reaches up and grabs the coins and pulls them down under the water. You continue on down into the forest, and... Um, you can see that the forest, the deeper you kind of get into it and the closer you get to the point on the map, 
um, that's marked as red caps, the more you see that the trees are covered with mushrooms. Uh, the mushrooms that kind of like ride uh, along the side, on the outside of trees, um, some growing up um, at the bases of those trees, a number of them with bright red caps with white um, spots about them, um, some orange, some kind of just the typical grayish kind of color. Um, but there are a lot of mushrooms compared to the not many or any uh, mushrooms you've seen thus far in the, uh, the forest. Um, as you kind of approach to um, where the marking is, um, the forest becomes a bit more of a thing that is broken apart. The trees appear to have been cut down, uh, sundered, um, and they kind of have a open kill zone uh, or clearing around um, a small uh, rocky hill much like the one you just left. However, this one um, appears to have a large cave mouth um, on its side that you can see from here. Um, and there appears to be kind of a orange light kind of exiting out of the cave mouth in the mist. The um, time of day is still relatively midday. It's not like terribly late. Um, but even despite that, the darkness of the cave um, makes the light kind of burst out at you. It's very noticeable. There don't appear to be any signs of any goblins. Um, it does look like there probably were. Um, it looks like they might have been around this area. Well, my friends, onward into the uh, very dark cave to, fa or to face our fate or make our fortunes. Potentially. I would just want to lean down and just check for footprints that seem goblin -y. You see lots of them. And they appear to be kind of moving in and out of the area um, and towards that cave mouth. Okay. Yeah. I'll I would on. like to uh, draw my axe and uh, start grazing towards the mouth of this cave. Okay. Sword in hand, dagger in hand. All right. Okay. You guys make it over to the cave mouth. Um, quickly enough, um, it doesn't seem that anything has detected you once you get to that point. Um, and you can kind of see into the cave mouth that kind of leads down um, a small shaft and then into a wide open space, uh, a cavity inside of this cairn um, that has a large kind of um, bonfire set in the middle of it. And there appear to be dozens if not uh, hundreds um, of small bedrolls all about the area with small small snatchel, uh, satchel snatchel bags satchel bags near the um, the bedrolls I'd like to spend a couple of seconds just going to each of the satchel bags and just looking in them okay um, upon inspecting them you notice that they have just typical pack gear for what you assume a goblin would want, um, you know, some roots, some mushrooms, um, and uh, trinkets, uh, baubles. If you spend a little bit more time searching, you're able to find some coin as well. Um, go ahead and roll me a d8, a d10, and a d12. Four gold, five silver, and four copper. Are there any uh, chests or anything like that in the room? Doesn't appear so. As you're kind of inspecting the uh, area, that was Gimmits who said that, right? Correct. Just, uh, uh, the the thing between you two, it, it doesn't happen for Lewis, but when you guys click the cue to talk, you kind of have the same background noise going, and your voices aren't I mean, they're they're dissimilar, but like it's just it's never mind. Anyways, to the point. Um, as you're kind of inspecting around the area, you notice that the uh, ground here has been heavily disturbed recently. And it looks like a lot of um, movement recently uh, across the stone and out of the stone, dragging and stuff like that has happened very recently. Um, yeah, uh, Bellerin, is there anything in particular that you're looking at or investigating? Um, I'm actually going to investigate near the mouth of the cave to look for evidence of, say, staging. 
because we piss them off. If there are a lot of times, if you have individuals who are warriors, they'll like pound their weapons on the ground or stamp things like that. Yeah, I understand. And uh, yes, exactly. A perfect question and uh, a good question in that you realize that it does look like there were forces that were staged at this point just outside the, uh, the cave. Um, a lot of stuff was moved out of the cave and then there was a ground that was cleared, um, you know, the, the portion of the cleared ground that was used to kind of stage a group of what seems to be about 40 goblins. Um, as you're kind of inspecting that from the cave mouth and looking down and kind of checking back in with everybody, the wind in this area starts to pick up heavily. Um, unnaturally so, uh, supernaturally. Um, and as you kind of, um, you know, wonder what's going on, you hear a voice kind of echo through the winds and it kind of blur or blares into the cave as well. And it says, try back at the village. Is it a voice we recognize? It is not. Hey guys, um, we staged an attack. I think we need to move quick. We start we running. Done already. Just run, just running towards the, the village. village. As you guys are exiting out of the uh, cave mouth and moving out, the winds kind of focus in a point near the tree line and kind of descend down. And as they do so, um, they take on a form, um, a humanoid form. Um, and uh, you recognize um, him immediately as an elf with blonde hair. He's wearing a tabard um, with blue colors upon it. In the center of the blue tabard is a holy symbol. Um, and he has several swords on his person, two short swords at his belt, one sh long sword on his back, and also on his back is a bow and quiver. One second, I'll give you a picture. My computer will do the thing. Do the thing. Does, are you guys seeing it or no? I am not. I am not. How about now? Oops, it's not now. Yep. Yes. He kind of starts moving towards you with a uh, uh, very um dominant stride um he looks over to you are you the ones they sent for me we are then let's hurry back we shall not tarry let's move and he turns and starts walking back towards the forest i, I don't think i even stopped running to look at him properly i just continued running well the buffeting the buffeting wind definitely would have kind of caused you to ah but yeah um, you start moving on. He starts walking. Um, you probably gain past him. Um, and then he kind of picks up his speed. Without running, he's just very very fast in his, his pace and manages to keep up with you. So he's kind of loping along a hunter's pace. Mm -hmm. The dwarf is trying his best. <laughs> the uh, elf looks to the dwarf, kind of stops and waits for him to kind of catch up. Um, gives him a look up and down. Waits for him to continue on um, and stays kind of to the side of him in the back of the group if you guys are moving forward fast. I'd probably look at him and say, so you're the elf of the woods, huh? I am Elrith. And you are? Yes. George. Hmm. I'm not terribly familiar with the uh, dwarven houses outside of the valley, but I'm, I'm sure yours is a noble one. As noble as one can make it. Hmm. I try to do right by my own name rather than just my clans. Very good. And what of your friends who are in such a hurry to move on past you? I'm assuming you guys are stopping and kind of moving back to catch up with them. We are. Or the dwarf is not I, as fast, yeah. I think I'm still keeping at the same pace. Yeah, you'll lose us in no time then. 
the uh, elf looks to the half elf, kind of gives him a look up and down. Hmm. What was that? Just because I'm a half breed? No, I care not for your human blood. That is actually probably a purity over the autumn blood within you. Then I take it you are of the summer. Winter. I stand corrected and apologize. Hmm. Your people are very peaceful lot. It's a surprise that they would even bring up a green knight to send forth into the world. Did you do it of your own accord? Was it the human blood inside of you that did it? Or did the seers in your enclave send you out? It was in my nature to protect the places that need protecting. Then I can respect you. He kind of gives you like a half smile um, and uh, says, do you want to catch up with your friend? He says to the dwarf. Do you do you want to catch up with your friend? Your mic is coming in with just clicks, man. That's actually more than I'm even hearing as well. Gimmit's Iron Forge. Do you wish to catch up with your friend? Oh, I thought you were talking to Ravis, not me. Sorry. Yes, Sorry. yes, I would. <laughs> of course, it, it's perfectly fine. I got people mixed up earlier, and it's, it's absolutely fine. He uh, reaches down to you after saying a word in Sylvan, um, or a couple of words in Sylvan, um, touches your shoulder, and you feel your feet become lighter, and you feel yourself lift off the ground. You gain a speed, a uh, flying speed. Oh, that that this is this is weird. Dwarves are meant to be on the ground, but this is okay. <laughs> he smiles and he says, "You should be able to go over the treetops." I would like to do so then. Uh, catch up with uh, Hadrian up front. <laughs> Out of character, I'm just picturing a uh, flying battle rager. It's just a flying ball of death. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just imagining this is where the myths of Christmas come from. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm thinking he's a really confused about being able to fly. So like at the beginning of Peter Pan, where they like touch him with the pixie dust and they start floating around and flailing before they can kind of figure out how to do it. Right. I just imagine you hit like four different trees. It's like the first <laughs> at least flying. He uh, manages to break the treetops, though, and start moving on ahead. Eventually, you get to a point where, because you're moving at a 60-foot pace, you're able to catch up with Hadrian and see down to him. If you'd like, you can descend upon him and kind of catch up with him. The uh, elf and the half-elf left alone, he um, looks at you and he says, Have you encountered these redcaps before? Only earlier today when we thoroughly stopped a few of them from assaulting one of the villagers. Well, I understand that they are a treacherous lot, more so, more wily than other goblins. They will not engage in tactics as um, bestial as a typical goblin. So be wary. Think more like you're hunting a pack of or than you're dealing with a pack of wolves rather than a rabid dog. Redcaps feast on wolves. It was meant to be an analogy, nothing more. It's a fair one, but understand that these are more treacherous. He he kind of seems like a jerk. Uh, like I don't I don't know if I'm playing it right, but yeah, um, I'm hoping that he comes off like a jerk because that's the goal. All right. Well, he's an arrogant elf. Believe me, we can tell. Very good. Um, you guys start to make it towards the uh, the town, and you're actually coming at it from a different point um, than you have ever before. Um, there's a road that kind of leads into the forest, um, but descending down the road, as you kind of lead up to the town, there's a small uh, river or stream that kind of runs along the eastern side of the town, and a bridge that goes up over that um, to a wooden wall, um, a... Uh, uh, 
I'm trying to think of the word, kind of a defense point, not really um, a very strong fortification, but um, a rampart of made of wood, um, mostly just logs that have been kind of um, nailed together. Um, but what you can see is across the, uh, the bridge um, and on the opposite side of the bridge, there appears to be engagement um, between human um, guards that you'd seen in the town as you kind of, you know, small militia and red cap goblins. As you kind of look down upon the scene, um, you can see that the guards are kind of falling back. Um, it looks like there's one creature that's not a goblin, um, or at least not like the other goblins. It too wears a red cap on its head, but it's wearing black armor, plate armor, um, and wielding a very large sword. It's already made its way across the bridge as you kind of focus in on it, and it's moving into the town, slashing through the guards with no problem. How much larger is it than a goblin? I'd say it's about the size of... You're the tallest guy in the group, so it's about your height. Knowing the spell, knowing magic as I do, would I be able to know if Gimmick could potentially carry me into the air and drop me onto it? Um, so the dwarf could probably have to, um, typically you're not allowed to fly if you're encumbered, um, but I'll allow it. If, um, Gimmitz wants to make a strength athletics check to hold you, that's fine. We can drop me down All right. as a dive bomb. How does... That's exactly what I was just thinking, too. Okay, so go ahead, give it to make a uh, strength athletics check. Come on now. There we go, they all came in at once. <laughs> Awesome. We'll go with the first one. We'll go ahead and say that's good enough. Um, you heft up or kind of drop down, grab Hadrian under his arms and start flying out that way. Uh, do me a favor and roll me, just for the hilarity of it all, a percentile die. Just, just the whole time he's carrying me, I'm just going, watch the spikes, watch the spikes, watch the spikes. Man, they're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. How would I do a percentile roll on this? Um, so you can go ahead and click on the, uh, there's a dice thing on your side slot there. And if you see that it says advanced roll, change the D20 to a D100. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or you can hit sl backslash roll. Um, yeah, that works fine. Okay. So you're good. Um, you guys managed to fly out over. Once you get over the wall, you see that the uh, the leader of the pack and three other uh, goblins have kind of placed themselves there. You said you were wanting to be, because he's not able to hold on to you for much longer, you're wanting to be dropped to kind of stop him from his path inward? Uh, more drop on top of him so that I'm at a height advantage so I can stab him, stab him in the neck with relative ease and grapple him. You're going to try and down thrust onto him is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Land on top of him. Let's see here. Assassin's Creed, this shit. And Bellerin, um, as they're doing that... Um, Elrith is kind of moving down the path in the same kind of stalkerish but still quick pace that he has been um, since you've met him. Um, and uh, he looks like he's ready to engage the goblins who are in the back lines. I'm going to be trying to mimic the pace, though I know that with my armor, any uh, dream of stealth is exactly that, a dream. So... Okay. All right, just let me get the battlefield here set up. Just give me one second. I just because you kind of changed the dynamic. <laughs> um, this is this is hilarious. Just a, a flying dwarf coming in and dropping in somewhere on someone else. It works just, for me, man. Just two daggers in hand, just as I plumb it down. I'm just looking at him, just whispering under my breath. I don't want no more goblins in my motherfucking village. <laughs> is here. <laughs> uh, I think that's the best snake, snake on a plane reference I'm going to get throughout the whole campaign. <laughs> oh, 
I won't lie, I wanted that T100 to be really low, so he caught me in midair and just slammed me into the floor. No, actually what that was is to see, because the fly only lasts 10 minutes, so if he had rolled under a 30, um, it would have been wearing off just when that happened. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that would have been a cluster F. Yeah. I think, that, I, I think that's a KO for me. You're wearing spike armor. That is me falling, hitting the floor first, then having... No offense, a quite portly dwarf in arm spiked armor land on me. I think one yeah, of them will go from my brain. Uh, you know, a large pin cushion falling on top of you will do you good. All right, here we go. Let's see. Bellerin, do do do. And I just need Elrith as well. And map change. See if it works. Well, hey. Okay. So go ahead and make me an acrobatics check um, to see how we're hitting him in the fall. Oh my god. Okay. So go ahead and make an attack with advantage uh, against the hobgoblin. Can I use my? Can I do both attacks? Oh, both daggers. Single attack. Okay. And that's the hobgoblin looks like, by the way. All right. So that will. Um, okay, real quick, because um, I think you're doing something, and it's gonna really just make me grumpy um, if you do it. Uh, up in the top right corner, there are options to switch between normal disadvantage and advantage and such. Don't click those. Um, just set it on roll two, and if you're rolling with advantage, it goes to that one, okay? Don't hit those buttons. Right. I hate those buttons. They're the worst. But I see the attack. Um, that will miss. Um, okay. He manages to kind of like get his pauldron up um, and he's got a very high neck guard which kind of blocks the dagger um, you land and kind of roll in the dirt and then kind of get back up if you'd like you can take your bonus action to attack with the dagger now the other dagger yeah. Okay. Um, still catching him unawares um, I'll say you still have advantage for it um, that will hit and he'll take the damage. I know, fuck it. <laughs> he kind of like takes like the full on human to the like back and kind of rolls forward as you kind of tumble into the dirt. And he looks down at you with his smile and it's like, you know, what the fuck? Um, and you kind of reach up and cut into um, a, a, a small opening in his plate. I think he gives a bit of a Chelsea smile. <laughs> it looks like he's had a bit of uh, work done on his face already, but yeah. Um, <laughs> you cut him across the face then instead, and uh, yeah, his cheeks kind of bleed a bit. Um, all right, initiative time. Okay. <clears throat> I have an idea. It's pretty fun, right? Uh, that came in really statically. Say again. Hello. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm still flying. Yes. You're still flying. Yeah, you're probably about. I'd say maybe because you just cleared over the wall. Um, you're probably about twenty feet up. Okay, I'd like to just dive bomb this hobgoblin with open arms and just try to basically grapple tackle him to the ground. Okay, your portion of the surprise round was the depositing of the rogue. Um, which also, by the way, you had advantage on that attack. You should probably be rolling d6s for sneak attack. Um, so do that real quick, Hadrian. And uh, since you were depositing them, you'll go on your initiative and you can do that. Cool. Just need to quickly look up what my sneak attack damage is at level 2d6.
All right. It's a bit more of a red line than we originally had mentioned, um, and he looks quite annoyed. As he's kind of turning on you and looking down at you, he's raising up this very large great sword. For um, flavor's sake, um, Gimmits, you'll be dive bombing. Like you drop him, kind of spin around, and then hook back down to kind of tackle him. That's cool. Um, so you can go ahead and move yourself like right over top of Hadrian, and you're kind of in transit to do so. Okay, so right about there, about above him. Yeah, that's, that'll work. All right, uh, the goblins will go first. Um, these little guys kind of start swarming around you, Hadrian, not really paying attention to the thing that's now like twice, three times their height above them. They don't even really notice it. They just see threat and will attack threat. So ah. they're going to move in and attack you with scimitars. Okie dokie. <laughs> One of them will actually get a hit against you because you have a 14 AC, right? Or 15 when you're armored. I think it's 14. You're just in leather, right? Uh, yeah. I think so, yeah. I think yeah. I so only one hits you. Uh, you're going to take a total of seven points of damage as he cuts into your thigh. As you watch um, ahead of you, Bellerin, and move towards the fight, you can see that this first wave of goblins is basically first initially clashing. This guy gets cut down by the two goblins he's fighting with. This one moves in and attacks and doesn't get much, um, uh, you know, um, Head uh, edgewise, this one kind of starts moving in uh, to get through the uh, the front line. Um, this one kind of moves to here and to here. Uh, um, this one gets overwhelmed on the far end. This guard here, um, and he'll die. But they all seem to be kind of moving and pressing the attack. Only two of the guards get struck down. Uh, the rest of them are able to get their shields um, and their chain shirts kind of rattled a bit, not murdered outright. All right, um, Hadrian. I'm going to shout up first. I'm going to shout up at Bellerin. Just shout, oh, destroy, open the doorway. Open the Gim to get it. into the bridge. You said to get it. Yeah, the doorway is open. It's been busted oh. open. Yeah, it's oh. it's wide open. You can see out across. The uh, hobgoblin has made his way through it, and there are dead guards all around you. Oh, I'm just gonna go for the old booming blade. It's an action. Okay. And that's. Bonus action to hit him again with my dagger. Okay. Uh, All right. So you swing in. He brings his sword down. It looked a lot bigger as he was holding it up over you. You realize it's just a bastard sword, not quite a full great sword. He snaps it down, tilts the blade, moves the uh, jeweled dagger aside, and then snaps back very quickly and catches the uh, second dagger with the uh, sword guard. And kind of locks blades with you for just a moment. I just, um, look, I just want to look in his eyes and whisper, I'm going to take all you have. Okay. He understands what you say, and his action was going to be something totally different, but since you've spurred him on to it, he'll go ahead and attack. Um, it looks like he goes into a full, like, straight on attack um, against you, particularly. He'll make three longsword attacks. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> first one will hit but just barely the second one will hit as well the third one will miss you'll take a total of 21 points of damage oh i'm down okay so you kind of say something you see that smile return back to his face more sharp this time he pushes you back and then <laughs> and your chest becomes a series of red lines as he sends you back to the ground bleeding all right um, Gimmits, you watch your friend get laid low pretty quickly by the hobgoblin directly beneath you. Um, that's that's terrible. Agreed. Why is there a second token? How did I do that? Skills. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. 
Thank you. How did I just do that? <laughs> You're gonna smash, charge into him, and push him back. Or are you wanting to attack? Oh, uh, is, am I up next? Oh, sorry, sorry. Bellerin is. Apologies. And I forgot to roll for Elrith, so I'm going to say you guys go simultaneously. He looks to you, and in Elvish he says, do you wish to fight these goblins on the outside or help your friends? Can you handle the goblins on the outside? Answer my question quickly. We have no time for your queries. Give me to my friends, and I'll, or we'll come back to reinforce you. You both appear in a very quick purple explosion of energy um, from your position directly behind the hobgoblin. You can see beneath the hobgoblin, Hadrian has already been laid low. Above the hobgoblin is Gimmitz. Looks like he's coming down to charge into him. The second that happens, uh, the elf kind of looks at you and he says, take him down. I'll deal with the ones outside. And he walks right out, just stridently back onto the bridge. As he does so, he starts singing in Elvish. Um, and you understand the lyrics as the song of Talvi Madramic, the goddess of winter. It's a song of murder. It's a song of death. It's a song of the hunter. And he draws the two short swords from his belt. Oh, he had a silver idea to me. <laughs> Gimmits. Okay, so I'm going to come down and I would like to be two-handing uh, the standard in both of my hands. And I would like to be flying as fast as I can and bring this axe down upon this thing's head. Make an attack with the standard. Um, you have advantage for the attack. Uh, quick question. I didn't get an action after oh, he teleported us. Sorry, go ahead, Bellerin. Sorry, because, yeah, I want to hit him with my hammer, too. Go for it. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> so we know how that goes. Do you have anything to go Nope. Okay. Um, back to the cool part. Oh, sorry. <laughs> go ahead and roll me 2d6, um, uh, Aaron. Okay, 2d6. All right. You slam into him all dwarf missile straight into him and you can feel the spelling of the spell of fly kind of ending uh, this turn as it happens um, your axe slams into his pauldron and a normal axe may have been stayed by the uh, the armor plating but yours goes right through and stabs like clear into um, his shoulder your body then slams into his chest and the two of you tumble back to right about there um he is prone, and you are prone on top of him. Can I use bonus action to grapple him as he's down? A bonus action grapple, is that something that your class allows you to do or no? I, I don't believe, believe so. Is it? I'm not sure how that one goes. Or is grapple is a full action, isn't it? I, I think if you grab him, then you can kind of wrangle him around with your bonus action to deal damage, but not grab him with a bonus action. Pro tip, when you get fourth level, take Tavern Brawler. It might be the best thing you ever do in your life. Um, what does Tavern Brawler do? If you make an attack, you can then uh, with an improvised weapon or your fists, after that, you as a bonus action, you can grab them. Oh, that, that might work fantastic. Okay, so uh, if I can't do anything else... Uh, oh, uh, bonus action. I would like to enter a rage. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and say you did that beforehand, so I'll apply the damage. Okay. Because I'm probably pretty pissed off seeing Hadrian go down. For, sh for sure. So that would have been a total of 20 damage that you dealt with that attack. Awesome. Awesome indeed. All right. The uh, goblins um, will go, and the town's guard will actually go right before them. Um, so it looks like they managed to lay a couple of the goblins down. Um, but the problem is, is their numbers are a little lower than the other ones. And three of their guardsmen um, actually get taken down um, in response. The goblins also seem to be kind of welling into a point where they're taking over and pushing back the... Um, kind of pushing in the uh, humans and splitting their wave so that they're separating them. 
tactically, um, if anybody cares, what seems to have happened is the Hobgoblin walked through the Town Guard and left them to basically deal with the others as the Goblins started to move and swarm and whelm. Okay. Um, Hadrian. Oh, sorry, there's three Goblins right there for you. Um, you're prone and dying. Not a concern. The Dwarf, on the other hand, is not. I'm going to go ahead and take three attacks against him. Um, you can get your shield in the way if you'd like. On, I think it's, is it just for one attack or all? Bell no, I'm double check. Okay. It simply says I can use my reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. Okay, so just the one. Um, so for the first attack, are you going to impose or wait? Yeah, I shall. Okay. It, it's blocked, um, and you kind of knock it away. Uh, second one, you come in and attack. It's uh, not blocked um, by you, but it doesn't get anywhere near stabbing the dwarf. The third attack, however, this one being a bit more gnarly, a, a goblin, he just goes for the dwarf's calf and just stabs his scimitar, his curved blade, into like his leg. Um, he doesn't get past most of the leather and spikes, but he gets in enough that you can kind of hear flesh tearing a little bit. And uh, Gimmits, uh, you'll take five points of damage. Okay. You look down, and you see this little guy. <laughs> Goddamn goblins. All right. Um, Hadrian, death saving throw. I have two questions. Fire. Uh, one was I sent you over Discord. Was one use of DM inspiration? Or the other one, would I be able to use the DM inspiration? Um, so inspiration's for dice rolls, mainly. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it it's a cool idea, but it's not something that is terribly no necessary. No worries. Yeah, um, and then the second question? You use inspiration for that. You get a success yeah. instead of a failed. Yep. Yeah, I get Okay, one success and zero failures. Good times, good times. Um, all right, it'll go to the Hobgoblin, who's currently prone. Um, he is going to kind of just have a dwarf on top of him for just a second, kind of roll aside and move him off, stand up and yell at the three goblins in front of him in goblinese or goblinoid. Um, and uh, it seems that whatever he said to them has inspired them to just be more awesome. Well, that's just scary. <laughs> All right. Um, Bellerin, um, on your turn. Um, the uh, before you go, the elf outside will go. He casts a spell. Actually, he doesn't. He moves to. Hold on. Moves to here. Actually, more like here. Kind of just hops down off the bridge very quickly and lightly. Does like a flip and lands in the bank of the water. Points out and says in an elvish um, or sylvan term. Um, do you speak Sylvan? No, probably not, but it sounds That's like... How I do. You do? Okay, cool. It's, it's, he says, um, uh, cast down my foes with s sparks from the sky, and a bolt of lightning springs from his fingers and just dashes into a good chunk of the goblins here. Let me get the angle right. He's supposed to be there. He casts it there. Over top of those guys. And he will outright kill pretty much a lot of these goblins. Okay. Um, that's his. It's your up. All right. Well, it appears I have a hobgoblin and a regular goblin right by me. So, I'm going to hit the hobgoblin as best I can. Okay. Hopefully, maybe, if I'm actually lucky this time. That'll work. Um, yeah, that'll definitely work. Um, seven and eight. Is and as a bonus, or er, with the whole spend a spell to do a smite. Yes, absolutely. 
So it's a two d eight or one d eight damage. Two d eight, right? Two d eight. Yep. Yep. Go for it. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Yeah. Um, you hit him. Um, you see the sword uh, spark with radiant energy as it did against the dragon before. Um, he takes the shot and kind of looks at you uh, grimacing. Um, he's not bloodied. He's wounded for sure, but he doesn't seem to be as um, bad off um, as you, you'd like. He seems to be a tougher cookie to crack. Gibbets, you are prone and um, he's kind of standing above you. Oh. Okay, can I try to go in and grab? Can I get up and then try to grapple him? Do you want to get up and grapple him, or do you want to grab him and pull him to the ground? Where I'm at and just pull him to the ground. Okay, because you're doing that, like he's not really looking at you, he's focusing more on this paladin now. Go ahead and make a um, athletics check with advantage. Not much help. Oh god, that's <laughs> a crit fail and then almost a crit fail. Yeah, um he uh seems to be like trying to move a uh pillar of stone as you grab a hold of him. He kind of looks back down at you and then looks at the elf again. Um still kind of just looking between the two of you, um unsure of what he wants to kill first. Um all right. Um that's your action. Um Let's see. You would have had advantage for that, anyways, because of raging, right? Yeah, I would have had advantage for raging. So you would have had a plus two, but it still doesn't do anything. Yeah, if you're, yeah, okay. Um, that'll be your turn, goblins. You can stand up afterwards. That's fine. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. If I could stand up after that. Disengage. 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 A little bit more of that disengage. And this one is going to disengage. Looks like the goblins um, far afield are attempting to retreat. The town's guard are all looking over at the elf with a, a smile on their face. One of them yells out, it's Elrith, he's come to save us. Um, the goblins that are inside are kind of in between you know, thoughts here but they've been commanded to do what they've been commanded to do. So they're going for the dwarf, all three of them. Um, and they have leadership. And so they're being granted an extra D4 to their attack rolls. If I need it, I'll roll it. All right. Um, on the first attack, um, do, uh, Elf, do you want to impose? Yeah, I will. Okay, that'll block. Uh, good choice, by the way. On uh, the scimitar second attack, uh, 17 does not hit the dwarf, or does? Uh, I'd be right at my AC, so... Okay. And then the second one, an 18 will hit as well. Okay, so seven points of damage from the two attacks. Total, seven. All right. Ready. Hadrian, death saving throw. All right, that's two successes. It will go to the Hobgoblin, who, amidst the fight, and you guys uh, kind of dealing with him, the dwarf, you're kind of in his way. Um, he basically starts circling around you with his sword kind of in between you and him. And once he makes it around you, he keeps his sword up towards you, reaches down, grabs Hadrian's chest, and lifts him up into the air, bringing his sword up with it as well and placing it against Hadrian's neck. He's unconscious, mainly, um, but it looks like he's still breathing. And the goblin, or the hobgoblin in the common tongue says, Let me leave or he dies! Bellerin's reply... If he dies, I will massacre every one of you. We're already dead if we fight on. I will leave him here if you let us leave. Do you want a slow death or a quick death? Because if you kill him, your death will be slow. Understand, he dies if I do not get to leave. Do you hear me? Will you leave the village alone after you or afterwards? If we you kill mercy? You killed our men. 
We came for retribution. You came for retribution against the wrong individuals. Will you leave the village alone if we let you go? You see one of the goblins next to him go, It was them! It was the dwarf! In uh, common, and starts looking at you like... And you recognize that goblin as one of the ones that... The, the very one that was closest to you as it ran away from you, Gimmits. Um, has it has it got my dagger in it? <laughs> Can someone go <laughs> that for That's me? right! The one that next has to a dagger in the one a builder. It totally does. The one next to Bellerin, the one that's like closest to the bottom of the board, that one totally has a dagger in his shoulder that's just... he, he He's strapped bandages around it. Someone grab me my dagger. <laughs> Um, Hadrian, um, since this is kind of uh, just a quick question, Gimmits, um, Bellerin, you're both next. Do you want to engage and attack anyone? Who? Me? Uh, no, no, the, the not dead people. Oh. How would I try to go about that? Would there be a way that I could interpose myself and maybe knock his sword away? Or if you want to go. Maybe. Like a, a, in a systematic method, like you're currently standing your ground, not moving towards him. It looks like the hobgoblin is readying an action that if anybody moves towards him, uh, good night, sweet prince. Um, he's going to attack him and probably make him make or make him fail death saving throws automatically. And he gets three attacks, so you've seen. So he'll pretty much outright just stab him, brutalize him to death. You're pretty certain that if you were to step forward and try anything, Hadrian gets. De just destroyed. Drop our friend, and I will not harm you. I will drop him on the other side of the bridge. Um, since we are currently gimmicks, you're not attacking Bellerin. Are you attacking? Or doing anything? I'm doing anything. Okay, so then we're going to I, I to drop Hadrian. <laughs> we're going to fall out of combat, like uh, turn order, because we're not doing it at a six by six second beat. Um, I need one more death saving throw from Hadrian. So you let me wake up and just... Oh, oh no, 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 no. If you succeed three death saving throws, you don't wake up. You, oh, no. um, you're just stabilized. You're not... I would have uh, woken up if it had been the second one. <laughs> no, like, yeah, for sure. Um, so that's a worse one. Um, you can see Hadrian start to... <laughs> and start to spit up blood. And the, the hobgoblin says, Last chance! Let me across the bridge. I'll leave him there. We leave. Do it. But if he dies before you drop him, I will hunt every one of you. Okay. He starts to make his way towards the bridge. And um, he's got, he's holding Hadrian like up, but he's got his back t towards you guys. So he's the, he's backing away from you guys. And the goblins are kind of walking along on the bridge, um, kind of keeping pace in front of him. The town's guard are turning now that the other goblins have been routed. Um, one more death saving throw from you, Hadrian. Okay. The second, like, Hadrian starts to and bleed out a little bit more, um, you can see that the elf from the coastline just soars straight out across the bridge and becomes like a whir of blades as he passes by the hobgoblin. Um, he cuts into not only the hobgoblin that's standing there, but also the goblin to the side next to him, and both of their heads fly off as their bodies kind of slump to the ground, and he looks into the, the doorway and he says, get him up quick, as he kind of flies down to the um, other shore. Okay, I'll run over to uh, Hadrian to try to catch him. I mean, obviously he was in the hand, so mm -hmm. I could yeah. maybe try to catch him before he hits the ground. Okay, um, perfectly fine. You're able to snatch, like, grab him, um, and then Bellerin, um, probably the only one with an ability to heal him, you literally have <laughs> one chance. I have the spell, Cure. I'm using it. Damn right. Okay. Um, so it'll be a D8 plus your Charisma modifier. Perfect. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Hadrian, you get eight hit points back. Um, as you feel your wounds kind of close up, your clothes don't. Um, but you do feel, like, as you're looking at the wound and kind of regaining consciousness, there are two scars on your chest that form an X just across your sternum. If I look at my chest, I look at one of the goblins, it just, it's probably really weak, I just want to throw my normal dagger at it, just... 
before you uh-huh. even get the notion to like reach down for the dagger, the two are trying to run away, and an elf is zimming past them, cutting them to pieces. You stole my kill. Is it <laughs> fall asleep? The elf says they were all my kills. I've been here longer than you. You're just new. You're new. You don't even know the the situation here. But yeah, a lot of them escaped, though. The elf kind of lands, um, starts talking to the town guard, and looking over the dead. Um, Hadrian's gained consciousness. He's kind of wanting to put his dagger into people. Um, Gimmits, what's the first thing you're doing after the conflict? Um, going and probably grabbing goblin corpses and starting to throw them into a pile. Okay. Outside the gates. We start getting a pile over here off the side of the road. And Gimmits is putting them there. All right. I'll go ahead and get these ones that are alive here off the board. All right. And then, um, Bellerin, what are you doing? In character, he's actually somewhat torn. But I think I worded my promise very fairy-like when I said, I will not attack you. <laughs> the, the I agree. Mean, this is the bridge. I was going to try to attack him. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't doing too well in those last couple of saves. If he had rolled fine on that second save, Elrith wouldn't have come in through. Yeah, it, it, it was literally a... Sh- should we have a look? To play? Should we see if I would have lived or died? Go for it. Ah, he would have lived. But, anyways. <laughs> point anyway. of order. He, he he was saved. The uh, elf was watching as well. He wasn't going to let him die um, either. He had the same mentality. But yeah, so Gimmit starts throwing goblin corpses into a pile. Um, Bellerin, um, kind of, you know, torn by your promise, kind of being slighted upon, but not really. He didn't hear the promise. He didn't hear the conversation. Right. Um, he'll actually approach the pile of goblins and begin murmuring last rites. Okay. They're still a sentient and sapient being. They deserve at least that much respect. And, or, and then follow it up with doing the same for the guards, though much more formal. Yeah. The elf um, specifically asked you, they were followers of a value, so please perform the appropriate rites. Referring to the I'm guards not. or the goblins? The guards. Um, he doesn't say anything about the goblins. In fact, he's kind of annoyed that you're performing last rites for them, but he seems to understand, but still hate the idea. Um, can uh, I go search the hobgoblin, as I'm obviously tossing his corpse onto a pile? Absolutely. The hobgoblin has a suit of plate armor, um, which is fitted for a medium-sized creature of a humanoid height. Um, it can be refitted if you can get a hold of a blacksmith, or you want to spend some time working at it yourself. Um, it is black, and it has four symbols upon it. Um, the symbols are a circle with three outstretched patterns. It's like someone took the number six and put three of them together in a star-like fashion. Um, it, it looks like some sort of religious symbol. Okay, but it's just normal plate armor, nothing magical about it. If you want to, I mean, in all honesty, you could probably wear the top portion of it as a suit of half plate armor, if or anybody could if they wanted to. What does um, half plate do to my to my stealth? It's medium. Um, I don't even think you're proficient with it. Oh no, I'm probably not. Um, all I want to do is I just want to go have a look and make sure Raiden's okay. Okay. Like, so probably staggering about, just going Raiden. You're wanting to go back sucks. into town then? Okay. Yeah. That's just, fine. Walking into town, shouting, seeing yeah. if there's any villagers that got caught in the crossfire. No problem. And then um, Bellerin's performing last rites. Gimmits is looting, effectively. Um, do you want to pull stuff from the cats as well, the goblins? Yeah, if I can find anything. Okay. I'm kind of stacking them in a funeral pyre kind of pile. You're going to burn them. I get you. Oh, yeah. Um, I would say that you're able to find... Probably 23 gold coins, um, 18 silver pieces, and about 54 copper. Okay, so 15 gold pieces. Uh, how I many silver? 18. I thought it was 24 gold pieces, 18 oh. silver, and 54 copper. 
I might have said 15, but now I'm saying 24. Oh, okay, I, know, I got it written down. Okay. okay. I got uh, that now, and then uh, I'd like to uh, ceremoniously light this pile of goblin scum on fire and spit on the pile Okay. as they one burn. Last, one last thing before you n- nuke them. They all seem to have a leather thong wrapped around their neck, like a like a necklace, um, and attached to it is a small, um, just copper coin, and the copper coin has the same symbol that is on the plate armor, the uh, spirally symbol. Okay, I'd probably take a lot of them. Okay. Alright, um, so go ahead and put um, let's see, one, two, three, twelve um, goblins, uh, goblin amulet, and then um, the coin, and then whoosh, light them on fire, the uh, town's guard start picking up their friends and kind of moving into town. Most of them are humans, uh, but one of them appears to be a half-orc, one of the town guard. Um, the only one that's really different than the others. And they all start kind of moving the bodies back into town. Uh, Hadrian, as you kind of march into town and start looking around for um, Radden, you find the town hall has been barricaded up, and there's a number of guards present there. Um, there are a couple of dead goblins around there as well, so some did actually manage to breach. Um, but the the town hall, the longhouse, it appears to be in working order. It doesn't look like it's been damaged too much. Um, the mayor comes out um, as with a, a messenger, or one of the town's guard, um, and uh, kind of starts looking around and sees you. Oh, you! Did you find Elrith then? I think so. It's all a bit oh. ha- ha- hazy at the moment, to be honest. I just look down at the scar, the new scars in my chest. Is everything okay out there at the wall? Uh, I think the wall's safe. Oh, good. Aloe did a number on people, I think. Yeah. Are you? I remember falling, and then. <laughs> Are you still randomly over. saying rotten? Like yeah, just every now and again, just I think I, I think I've probably got a bit of a concussion. <laughs> yeah, the mayor the mayor looks at you confused and kind of walks away. And one of the town's guard kind of walks over to you and he says, "Are you looking for that girl, the acolyte?" Yes. She's left. She left with a mage. A mage? Yeah, the town mage sets her. Where'd they go? They left. They left this place. Just left. Correct. Mage's business. Okay. You know how it is. Mysterious. <laughs> yeah. Go All ahead. right. Back to the uh, town gate. Um, Elrith kind of looks over to the elf after he's performed rites and helped bury the uh, town's guard. It's gotten closer to nightfall. And he says to you, quite heroic. Not something I see in the autumn blood very often. Not only will I commend you, but I will reward you. Were you... Did you go to my house? We did. We actually copied your map to find where the hobgoblin... Or where the red caps were holed up originally. Uh, acceptable. Mittens had already told me that someone had entered the house. She didn't know exactly who it was, but I presumed it was you. Just in the distance. Uh, I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> um... Adrian's ears are burning because, hey, he was right. It looks like you need some rest and respite. Um, come with me back to my house and I will make beds for you and I will um, hopefully be able to grant you um, a, a blessing from the spirit of the valley. Was she the one who dwells in your in the hot springs by your house? Did you see her? The dwarf caught a glimpse of her and I paid a tithe to her on our way out. The elf looks to the dwarf again, and he says, I knew there was something about you. Hmm. Only the truly noble-blooded can see beyond um, her guise. She she is indeed a a, a nymph, um, a spirit of the Feywa, the Shazas. She should be able to reward you with um, some healing. It looks like you might need it, and where did your friend go? Probably to look for the Acolyte that we brought here. I, I thought I heard him yelling her name. Acolyte? Of the uh, I, yes, there was one left. 
their tower fell, but one of them survived? We did our best to keep her safe and get her here. You brought her here. It was where she wished to go. I must go speak to the mayor. Let us go. And he starts walking across the bridge and heading back into the town. I just want to be, like, whilst they're on their way to me, I just want to check and make sure Bellerin's lady, uh, the mayor's daughter, is okay as well. And just muttering about, good, if you're safe, it's fine. Yeah, she seems to be doing okay. Um, Elrith looks very concerned as he's walking in towards the center of town. Um, Bellerin and Gimmits, if you guys are following, um, if you want to try and engage him with questions, feel free. Um, I would like to ask him, uh, what, what do you know about the acolytes of the that fallen tower? Mages. Mages who gave away portions of their souls to great beings. Great beings from a land in the beyond. A land known as somewhere else. Um, it was created by an old mage, a mage named Tak, who was celebrated as a god in some realms. The acolytes of the binding take on these familiars at a young age. The more powerful of them become them, become these beings. Some have even been known to become dragons. It is a way for someone to assert their position in life, what they were granted when they were born and become greater in an easier fashion than study. And he kind of just shakes his head. So cheating next, essentially. Yes, cheating. Exactly cheating, he says to you. Why would that be such a binding? If, I'm sorry. Uh, what? You go first, give it. Oh, I was going to say, not exactly an honorable pursuit as far as the magic's regards, then, are they? I suppose they think they're quite honorable indeed. But in my opinion, no. Um, you guys start to approach the town hall. You can see Hadrian kind of um, stepping out as you start to approach. Uh, what, the, what do you know of this binding? Does it do to the person being binded to, you know, the, the human or whoever would be going through the process. What does it do to them if they're becoming a dragon? Does it shape their personality or sanity? The ones that I have met, the older um, members of the order, yes, very much, very much so. You said that they uh, bind their, or they give a portion of their souls to beings from elsewhere uh, or from somewhere else. What would those beings gain from such a bond, though? Um, go ahead and do me a favor. Make an arcana check real quick as he's about to answer your question. Would I have been near enough to hear them talking now? Um, he, they're just about to... Uh, I'll say... I'll kind of cut in when you're kind of getting close enough. So okay. when he says somewhere else to you, you think he means little s, little e, somewhere else, like another place. Um, and he says to you, the somewhere else. It's where the spirits of dreams, where it's where the the uh, Makema, the Dreamweaver, uh, rules. Have you never heard of it? Now you are entering into the scene. Not personally, I have not heard of it. As a dwarf, I do not uh, pursue much of the magical paths at all. These creatures that they're binding themselves to are things created from the mind. They aren't true dragons. They're dragons as they are seen by the creator of the dragon. They were created long ago. These beings, these monsters, these entities, whatever you would wish to call them, they exist in this place called somewhere else. Um, to some, it is known as Kazmakalau, the gray place. And is this place a danger to the mortal realm? No. You go to it every night you sleep and dream. He looks to the half-elf and he says, Demi-elves don't trance, do they? Out of character, do we? I don't think you guys have trance, no. Do you? With the four-hour sleep thing? Yeah, do yeah. You four hours? I think they do. They do? Elves do, half-elves don't. Okay, great. 
So yeah, he, I, I, I thought I knew. I, I, I thought it was no. But what I'm trying to relay is Elrith has no idea. <laughs> Uh, no, I cannot trance. My human, or the human aspect of my nature precludes it. So you have dreamt before in your life as well. You've all been somewhere else. And elves do not? No, we do not sleep in this place. We are creatures from the Feywild, what is known as the Shezaz. In that place is where we regain our energy. So when we are here in the material plane... We rest. We enter into a trance to return to that place for a time. Is with this connection, not knowing much of anything about this, is there a way to uh, communicate with these other planes when you are there? I will definitely try and answer your questions a bit further on, but I do have pressing matters for the mayor. I must speak to him. He looks to Hadrian. Is he within? Yes. He is. Very good. I will return shortly. Kazm, uh, I just have one last question for you. Hmm. Kazm Merkalau. Does it go by another name? The Dreaming Place? The the Weaving? The, the Shadow Fell? No. No? It is the Place of Dreams. Okay. I was trying to figure out which one it was on the cosmology. And yeah, in the cosmology, you have the Shadowfell, which in the uh, setting is also known as the Plane of Shadow. It's also known as the Dargian Rift. It's also known as the Black Place, um, the uh, Underneath, um, etc. Some aspects of the Foul Deep, which is this plane's Underdark, is the Shadow Plane. Uh, but Kazmakalau is the Gray Place. It's not the Feywild. It's not the Plane of Shadow. It's not the Material Plane. It's none of those, but it's all of those. It's the dreaming oh, space. Allowed. It's the dreaming space. It's the plane of dreams. And I'm just going to look at the paladin and just go, you don't have mending, do you? <laughs> I like this shirt. <laughs> the, um, uh, after a fashion, or before Elrus goes in, he says, make sure you're ready to leave this place in short order. I'm taking you back to my hot springs. And then from there, your path is your own. And he walks inside to speak to the mayor. That's what we need to discuss. Wherever it is, we're going to go next. Agreed. Did you find your lady, love? <laughs> Raiden has gone off with a mage. Why, I do not know. Just She left earlier, apparently, with the town mage. Ah. Uh-huh. Well, our new friend seemed very concerned that she uh, had been brought here. So this might give us an idea for our next path. It doesn't take too long for him to come back out. But when he does, the mayor comes out as well and calls over a couple of guards. And you very can very easily overhear them. Um, it sounds like they're preparing to evacuate the town. Um, Elrith starts walking with or to you. And he looks to you and he says, with me. And he starts walking towards the exit of the town. Why is the town evacuating? Because Stormloft's men will be here in no time. If an acolyte of the Binding was brought to this place, I assure you, this place will be raised within a f- sixth day. Uh, Bellerin himself will s- almost sneer at that remark. The more, or the more that Stormloft acts, the more the more my fury gets uh, stoked. Stormloft wasn't always this way. It used to be quite a nice place to live. The You're right. The guards were nice. The guards were friendly. A couple even would give me food when I was younger. And you're absolutely right. Way. The elf looks back to you, and as he's still walking, he says, and others must be made aware of this. The goings-on within the kingdom have not been broadcast to the kingdoms in the surround. <sighs> I hope hey. that we can get someone outside of the kingdom to do just that. I believe I know the reasoning behind the change. Or at least an idea of why. Oh? Have you ever heard of a guild known as the Fellhoods? You think the bandits are in charge of the city now? Oh, it definitely seemed that way. 
An interesting with how quickly I was caught. An interesting theory. If word can be given to the Duke Vondreans, then perhaps he can challenge the king's power and perhaps remove the ill element from persuading his actions further. Hello, if you're quite a magically in tune man, aren't you? I am indeed. You wouldn't understand a statue of Ori Calcum, would you? You have Ori Calcum on your person? He stops. Potentially. He kind of looks back at you. Let me see it. I take it out slowly, never letting it out of my grip. Tight. He raises his hand to take it from you. Look, don't touch, I believe, is the term here. I cannot know if it's my... truly oracalcum unless I can feel its surface. Place it in my hand. I will not take it from you. Do you not trust me? I trust very few. Even these two I don't fully trust. Did you see what but... I did to the goblins outside of the wall? Or were you too busy laying dying? More than likely laying dying. Ask your friends what I did to the goblins. If I wanted that statue, I would take it from you. I'm not a trusting man. I'm not a man. I don't have your petty thoughts. Hand me the statue or I will not talk to you of it anymore. I place the statue in his hand, but I keep <laughs> mage hand around it at all times. Yes. <laughs> As, as he kind of, like, sees that happen, you see him cast a spell real quick, and your mage hand's dispelled, and then he starts looking at the statue, and he looks at you again, and he says, We're going to have issues if you cannot trust me. I'm glad your friends are not as unwise. And he says to you, he hands it back to you, It is a statue of the Maiden of the Sun, but it's not what the outside holds that is worth anything. The Oracalcum the might inside. sell for something. There is something inside of the statue. How do I go about breaking it open? You'll have to find a way to melt the metal. And the only forges that I can think of that are hot enough to do that would be those within the mountain Colbeard in the city of Stormloft. He looks to the dwarf and he says, You should know of those, am I right? Yes, they have forges, some of the finest in the land that could melt that. Very few would be that hot. The Earth's blood forges within the center of the city of Colbeard would have enough heat to melt Oracalcum. And then put it back in my pack. But be careful. Are you... Go ahead. To, to uh, uh, Hadrian, um, if we can get to the Earthheart Forge in the mountain of the dwarves do you want just what is inside that will be quite a time away i believe you guys make your way um back to the hot springs once you get there um elrith kind of slumps his pack to the side pulls off his tabard and um his his scarf and cloak and just kind of sets everything down and starts kind of disrobing and he looks to you all and he says if you wish to have the blessing of the spirit of the valley you must do likewise i hope you're not too I'm timid naked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see you sorry. i was like oh hey cool clank 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 i, I just look at lf and i do like try and talk to him throughout the thing of you're quite strong why do you believe in a god and not yourself? Like, try and have a discussion about the different... Do you mean Bellerith? My... Uh, Elrith. Elrith, okay. Yeah, um, he says, why do I believe in a god and not well, myself? Well, in a higher power than yourself. Just a, an arcanic conversation about the difference between my magic and his magic. From what? Oh, Elrith's a mage. <laughs> oh. oh, he believes in himself? Yeah. Oh. oh, he's a wizard, bro. He has a, he has a familiar. He's got spell books. He's... He's got blade oh. song. He's a yeah. He's a blade singer. Mind. <laughs> you were unconscious for a lot mind. of it, but <laughs> as he kind of starts talking to you, he says, "No, I'm a wizard." Um, yeah. yeah. You guys sit in the water um, and uh, for a time are calmed, and then Elrith kind of uh, lifts his hand up. Um, hold on a second here. He uh, lifts his hand up 
and uh, reaches over and grabs a sharp piece of stone. Um, he places the sharp piece of stone on his hand and cuts his uh, palm open and raises it up to the air. And in Sylvan, he says, unto the air, I grant you your gift. And then he kind of like starts hacking um, a bit in his, his uh, throat and like almost like he's coughing up something. And then he spits like a nasty looking, like phlegmy loogie in the water. I just want to my, my, my bet breath. This is so not sanitary. He spits into the water and he says in Sylvan, and to you, goddess of winter, and to you, creatures of the goddess, I give to you your gift. And he clasps the floating like phlegm in the water with his bloody hand and closes his hand. Come to me, spirit of the valley. Grant these heroes your gift. And as he says that and lets go of the water and kind of like raises his hand up out of the water, starts kind of wrapping his, his wound, um, the water starts to form up in the middle of everybody. Um, and the hot water and mist form together uh, to form a female form. And she looks to each of you. And she then looks to Elrith. You who have called me forth, she says in a tongue that you all understand, but her mouth doesn't seem to be moving in a fashion that matches what she's saying. She says, what has, what is it that you have called me here for? Elrith looks to you guys and in, common tongue says it looks like you have a couple of options some of you are interested in getting back into the city of stormloft he looks to uh hadrian and some of you are interested in getting farther away from this and he looks over to bellerin but i'd hope that all of you and he focuses in on the dwarf are interested in saving the valley and saving the kingdom as a whole and i feel the only path for you in that regard is going to the Duke Von Dreyens in the east and speaking to him and hopefully gaining his favor and having him come forth to challenge the king himself. I can ask this weird one favor and she will commit to it. I ask you, heroes, what would you have me do? I would ask of one thing. The honorable to I couldn't hear you very well. Do that again. Um, I said the one honorable thing I think to do would be to convince the Duke. I learned that to Hadrian. I will convince the Duke, but I would need a favor in return. A For me? Mine. From you, your wizard. You what favor do you ask? Scry. Oh, you wish to know of your friend? Yes. He looks um, to the maiden, um, and he actually he looks. So I've got I've got the dwarf, and I've got the uh, the the human. Did the uh, half elf chime in? I didn't hear you. I hadn't yet because I saw his uh, or I heard his uh, microphone glitch out. So I was going to wait until they both. Okay. Talked. Done theirs. Then it's your turn. Go ahead. From Bellion. As my companions have said, the truest path seems to be going to the Duke. Then I will ask her to commit you to Drayans, but I will first ask her a question um, for you, Hadrian. Um, he says up to the girl, he says in Sylvan, This man wishes to know of his friend. And um, please understand his mind and tell him if his friend is all right. The woman leans, like spins around like a serpent and kind of moves down to you. The lower half of her body is actually still connected to the water. She places a watery hand on your face and you can feel the water of the hot um, spring kind of touching your face and moving with a, a, a agency that, you know, you weren't anticipating. And she kind of, you feel her, like you can feel like the hot like vapors kind of entering into your head. And then you see a flash um, and you see a man in a prison cell, a black cell. And you've heard of the black cells of Stormloft. Um, this man kind of like looks around coughing. Um, and he kind of looks just covered with hair like he's been down here for a long time and you would recognize him as your even despite that you would recognize him as your compatriot um eric 
I'm coming for you, old friend. She stops and kind of pulls away from you. And then she turns back to the, um, the elf and she says, you have granted me one gift, but I know in your heart that you have another request. And she smiles and then she turns and she looks over to Bellerin and she floats over to him. And she smiles, then looks over her shoulder back at Elrith. Let me do as I please with this one, and I will give you what you want. And you speak Sel- uh, Sylvan and Bellerin, so you understand what she's saying. Uh, maiden of the Spr- or in Sylvan to her, Maiden of the Springs, I have no qualms with this understand that what I do to you will change your perspective on life forevermore. You will be different after you are with me. Are you still willing? Follower of the fair ones? I am. Hmm. She leans in and kind of like places her hand on your shoulder and starts pressing you down into the hot springs. He vanishes under the water. And her form kind of goes away under the water. Um, beneath the waves, they are beneath the, the water waves, beneath the rippling water top, you cannot see his form because of earlier you can't see his form. Um, but you see something entirely different underneath Bellerin than you saw before. You're actually in this very strange space, um, and you feel her against you. You feel her pressing on you. Um, and you've already removed your clothes. Anything that was l- left lingering clothwise is removed from you. And for what feels like an eternity, you feel pleasure, you feel joy, you feel just this um, absolute urgency to like just please whatever it is that's pleasing you. And as you kind of give yourself over to it, you raise up out of the water, Hadrian and Gimmets, when Bellerin removes his head out of the water you see that instead of having the bare strong chest of a noble knight or a green knight you see breasts and you see his face has changed to that of a female and we will start from there next session i believe that will be it for today i'm gonna go ahead and stop the stream I was wondering how you were going to handle that. Ron, well, one half it. That's what I'm going to do. I haven't stopped the stream yet. So people heard me have anime nerd references. But yeah.